So in the last tutorial we have seen a little bit of the interface, the navigation, the selection and viewing. So this time let's see the transform tools. And there are two things that you have to keep in mind. In Blender we have the object mode and the edit mode. There are more modes but those two are the main ones. One allows you to manipulate all the objects and the edit mode is where the modeling is going to happen. And if sometimes I miss a shortcut, you can always see what short key I have used in this left bottom corner. Ok, so let's get it on with this. And what we want to do is to press A to select everything and then we can delete all the objects with the delete key. Let's set our view to front orthogonal view, which can press numpad 1 and numpad 5. And by the way, in case you don't have a numpad, you can go to file, user preference and input you can select Emulate Numpad, which will convert your numbers from 1 to 0 into a numpad. Ok, so after you have erased everything and set your viewport to front orthogonal view, we can go ahead and press N, which will allow us to import an image to the background. Now let's add a new image, press in Open and select the image I left in the description or another image that you want to model as long as it has the front view, the top view and the right view. And now as you can see this has an option that says axis and we want to set this image to the front axis which means that we only can see this in the front orthogonal view. And if you press 3 you will see that in the right view there is no image in the background. Which also means that we have to add a new image to the right axis like this. And we can select the same image in this drop down menu. And if we press this icon, Blender will make sure that it will attach this image to this blend file. Which means that you can move the original image to another location, but Blender has already created a copy of that image. And now if we press 3 in the numpad, you can see that we have the right view image. Now let's add another image to the top view axis. And we can select the same image. And that's it. If you press 7 you can see that the image is there. And don't worry because we are going to align everything in just a moment. Now let's go back to the front orthogonal view. So we can press 1 in the numpad for that. And as you can see if you press the mouse wheel down to rotate the image will disappear because you will rotate in the 3D space and we don't actually want that. We want to pan our view and for that we can hold shift down and also press the mouse wheel down. And this time we won't get out of the front orthogonal view. So let's go back to our front orthogonal view. And to start modeling we need an object. And we have a plane, we have a cube, we can start with a sphere, we can start with a cylinder, we can start with a lot of things. But for this specific object, as you can see it's a bit squarey. So we are going to use a cube, which you can add with shift A and in the mesh selection you can select cube. And it will spawn in that cursor. Ok now so to move this object we can do with this axis with these arrows which we only can see too because we are in orthogonal view or you can press G which will allow you to move anywhere but since we are in orthogonal view we only move in the Z axis and the, in the X axis and there is a simple way to know which axis you are facing you can look down here in the left bottom corner or if you may notice in the background we have the blue line and the red line which means we don't see the Y axis. And if I get out of this front orthogonal view, you can see that if I press G, this cube will move anywhere. So this is the free end moving, but we can lock our movement to only one axis by pressing X, Z or Y. Let's go back to our front orthogonal view and let's move our object right in front of our SMG9. And as you can see, this cube is too big, so we need to scale it down. And the key to scale down it's actually S. So let's press S and as you can see if you move your cursor to the center it will shrink. And if you get far away from the center it will grow. And this is a free end scale. You can also lock to the X axis as you can see if we press X. We can lock in the Y axis, in the Z axis. It's the same thing as the movement. So let's scale it down like this and move the cube to the center of the SMG until it touches the white lines. Let's scale it in the X, like this, and at the beginning it doesn't need to have the perfect size. Now let's change our view to the right orthogonal view. 
with three from the numpad. And as you may notice, the right view is not aligned with our cube. And we can align our images if you go to this panel. And let's go to the right image. And down here, we can control the X of this image. And if we scroll a little bit down, and we need to center the right view of our SMG weapon with the blue line. And the value that I use it is minus 4.26. Now we can scale our cube a little bit down to fit the right view. Ok, that's great, and now we can do the same thing for the top view. Let's go ahead and press 7 in numpad to go to our top orthogonal view, and in the top view background image, we can align in the Y axis, and my final value is minus 3.8, as you can see. Ok, that's great, now we have the right and the top view aligned with our front view of our SMG weapon. Now, normally someone who is good at modeling will look at an object and deconstruct it in their mind. And by this I mean that most of the objects are composed by several objects. And if you look closely, this gun we see in the main frame, which is the cube that we already have, we see the clip, we see the handler where we can press the trigger, and we see the front handler, which looks like a cylinder. So let's go ahead and press Shift A to create a cube for the clip. Let's put it right here. Let's scale it down with S until it fits the white lines. Let's actually push it a little bit down. And if we wanted to rotate this object, we could press R. And it happens the same thing with G and with S. And by this I mean that you can rotate free end like this or you can lock your rotation to the X, to the Y, or to the Z, like we have done with movement and scaling. And so let's push it up again. Let's go to the right view with 3 from the numpad. Let's scale it down until it fits the bigger outlines. Because this smaller one is for the handler of the trigger, and the other one is for the clip. Let's go back to front orthogonal view, now we can scale only in X until it fits the white lines. Let's scale a little bit up in Z. So, like I've said in the beginning, there are two distinct modes in Blender. One is the object mode, which is where we have been working, as you can see down here. And if you click there, you will see five more modes. But we only want to focus in the edit mode. So let's click in edit mode. And as soon as we do it, we can see that our cube now is orange. And we can see some vertices and an outline that we can't see on the bigger cube. Which means that we can only edit one object at a time. We are basically inside this cube and for now we can only control their vertices. As you can see, we can select them with the right click, we can move them with G, you can press escape so the vertices goes back to its original place or with control Z. And that's really cool. But what if we want to select the edges? Well, we can switch to edges if we click on this button. And we can select the faces with this button, as you can see. There is also a shortcut for this, which I believe you should know and is extremely important for a nice workflow, which is the control tab. That will instantly let you select vertex, edges or faces. So let's go back to vertex and to our front orthogonal view. And if you are wondering if there is a shortcut to switch between object mode and edit mode, there is one, and it is tab, this one with this icon. And if you look down here, you will see that it's switching between edit mode and object mode, which is also very useful. And as you can see, if I select the bigger cube and I press in tab, I can enter in edit mode, then I press in tab again and I can go back to object mode, and so on. So it's really easy to work with this. And as a good modeler that you are going to be, you always want to keep your objects with their respective names. And we can do that in this panel over here. And in this cube, which is the object properties, we can click. And there is a lot of stuff here, only related to these objects, that we are going to see in later tutorials. But for now, we want to change only the name, which you can do here. So let's call this clip, or ammo clip. And let's select this cube and call it main frame. And now it's about time that we save, and we can do that with Ctrl S. And as soon as you do it, Blender asks you where you want to save your file, and you can choose a place to save this file, and give it a name. And after you have done so, you can press Save Blender File. 
The next video we will go a little bit deeper into modeling and see if you have learned something. You can find that video in the description or in my channel. So that's it, thanks for watching guys and see you in the next tutorial.